Morning. Morning, Susie, Suzanne, Scott, Edith, Paul, Stuart, Alex, Brenda, Robert, Barbara, Marty, Susan, and morning, folks. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Stuart, Anita, Nancy, John. Morning, Lorraine. Who are we using a second? Hmm, don't know what's up, I can't see myself. Anyway, good morning, folk. Um, glad you could always join us again this morning and this beautiful morning. Right now, I'm getting a lot of people asking me what's happening, uh, why I'm not in the truck. So I'm going to clear this up before we start. All right, there are two huge campaigns coming up. And like I did in 2012, I went into semi-retirement to fight them. Right? Because I can do that. In my profession, I can do that. So, if you're wondering why I'm broadcasting a lot from home, that's the reason. There's a, a couple of big campaigns coming up. And there's a lot to get on with, and I don't have the time to be a full-time truck driver anymore. I had the intention of being a full-time truck driver anyway. The company I was working for approached me and asked me to take the job. So, good morning, Sonny Abrove. So, for all you that are wondering why it is that I'm broadcasting from the house so often, I'm back into semi-retirement. There are two big political campaigns coming up, and I intend to fight them the way I did the last one and the way I have done since 2012. Okay, good morning Port Glasgow. So I hope that clears things up folks, and uh, you can still PM in me now and asking me why it is I'm not in the truck um, for the time being. And there will be the odd broadcast from a truck when I need to um, be in a truck. But as I say, there are two big political campaigns coming up, they're very important to me, and I intend to be in the forefront of fighting them. Okay, so good morning everybody, let's get on with the broadcast. Um, and we'll start with coronavirus update as we uh, normally do. Now, there's been a change to how the uh, amount of people in hospital are calculated. I don't quite get this. But apparently, the previous number was people who tested within the, the last 28 days uh, had a positive test, but ended up in hospital for something else. They were still being counted as being coronavirus patients. So the way they've calculated it has changed. And it's miraculously taken 200 people out of the figures. All right. So here we go, the coronavirus update. Um, tested in Scotland, 700 and 700,387. And that is plus 7,349 from Tuesday to Wednesday. So these are the figures for the 16th. There'll be an update at 3 o'clock. Okay. Tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores, 23,283, and that's plus 267, right? Um, in hospital, there are 51 people who are positive with COVID-19. Not a lot, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and they, uh, right, deaths. There's been an additional one death from Tuesday to Wednesday from this virus, unfortunately, and that takes the number to 2,501. Now, the National Records for Scotland gave its update yesterday, and up until Sunday, the 13th of September, an additional five people had died, having tested positive for COVID-19, or had died in the community and had COVID-19 as a contributory factor on their death certificate. Okay. Um, so the new figure uh, for deaths in the community and hospitals combined from the National Records for Scotland up until Sunday past, um, Sunday the 13th of September, the count has now up at 4,200. 
236. Big number. But as I say, um, there seems to be a lot more people being identified as being infected, but the amount of people in hospital is very, very low. Oh, out of the 51 that are in hospital, six are in intensive care, by the way. And the, the death rate's starting to rise again. Now we'll get to that now, right? So we're moving on to the review of the news. Okay, and this is a review of yesterday's news. Yesterday started, as it has, for a wee while now, with a rise in numbers of COVID-19 cases. Well, the number is rising. It's rising in the 18 to 45 year old age group. Okay. Um, because they're no actually complying as strictly with the rules as the rest is of the over 50s who are at, the, um, at more risk from this virus. So, you know, the 18 to 45s are getting on with their life. But unfortunately, this casual attitude that the 18 45s are, ta 18 45s are taking will eventually make it into your age group, or the over 50s age group, and they, we're at much more risk. And that will be why we're starting to see the death rate start to creep up a wee bit again. Because, as I say, the young, this isn't really affecting them. We've spoken about this for the months that we've been talking about this. And they're just getting on with things. And you can understand that they're young. They want to go on with their life. But they have to try and remember that um, they will come into contact with the rest of us, And it will put the rest of us in danger. Now, the reason for stopping visits to each other's households here in the central belt where 1.75 million people are under additional restrictions is to try and stop the 18 to 45s from spreading this into the, uh, the more older uh, age group. Okay, now I'm sure they don't mean any harm, um, but you know, they're young, they want to go on with their life. Most of us are 50s, we're going out doing my day's work. We're coming in, we're shutting my door and we're staying in. You know, to keep myself safe. Um, but as I said yesterday, we're getting into the flu season and the virus rate is going to rise anyway because apparently that's the conditions these viruses, COVID viruses thrive in. Okay, right, moving on. Yesterday, Barbados announces that it's ditching the jelly bean, the queen. It's getting rid of it. It's going to become a republic. Okay. Now, the Governor General of Barbados, Dame Sandra Mason, the Queen's representative on the island, stated the time had come to fully leave the, our colonial past behind us. The Barbadians want a Barbadian head of state. This is the ultimate statement of a, a confidence in who we are and what we can achieve. In a statement on Barbados becoming a republic, the Queen stated, it's up to the people. There you go, up to the people. No interference, no, no sorry to see you go, no of that stuff. Just it's up to the people, right? Yesterday, also yesterday, Westminster's most a senior law officer in Scotland, the Advocate General Lord Keane, offers his resignation to Bojo, the clown, right? Lord Keane had been under pressure since the Internal Market Bill was introduced uh, and uh, Brandon Lewis made it clear that they intended to break international law, the Northern Irish Secretary. Right? Now, Lord Keane had tried to justify what they were doing with this Internal Market Bill and breaking the law international and domestic, but uh, after trying to justify it in the Lords and getting slaughtered in the Lords, he tendered his resignation. The Bojo wasn't keen in taking his resignation and tried to talk him out of it. But by, last, by yesterday evening, the game was a bogey for Lord Keane. And any lawyer, I stated this, any lawyer in that parliament that votes for this bill down that road in Westminster should be struck off. Lawyers are legal officers. They're there to help administer and uphold the law. Any of them, any single one of them that breaks the law by voting for this bill, or voting for this bill to break the law, should be struck off in England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, wherever it is, they are badged as lawyers. You know what I mean? They should just be struck off. Simple as that. 
Aye, Mary, eh, Sarah's feeling fine, thank you. Right. Right. So yesterday, moving on, lunchtime rolls round and we have a Prime Minister's questions. Angela Rayner, um, the Deputy Leader of Labour, deputises for Sir Sicknote, the man that's hiding under the bed, one of England's top legal minds, apparently. Sir Steer Carmer, eh, Starmer, Sir Sicknote, and she... Um, Deputising for him at a uh, Prime Minister's question, right? So she starts off on COVID nineteen testing, and a uh, and she spoke of a member of the public, a constituent called uh, called Kia, who is having difficulties getting his COVID results, <laughs> right? So. Bojo blustered, the usual crap, buff, pulled some dodgy stats out of the thin air, and then says, oh, by the way, your constituent Kia has had his results, and it's negative. And then he says to her, so why isn't he here? <coughs> right. Next train, I went on care workers' pay, and asked Bojo if he knew how much a care worker would pay. Bojo blustered, bluffed, and he basically said that his mob had introduced the minimum at the living wage. He hadn't introduced the, the living wage at all. They just renamed the minimum wage. And he seems to have forget, forgotten that his Chancellor last week said there would be no rise in the so-called living wage, which is actually the minimum wage, because the UK can't afford that. Right? And then Rainer went on emergency funding for care homes over the winter because the emergency package of 600 million that was in place runs out at the end of this month. So Bojo tells her that there'll be a new care home package put in place, uh, winter care home package put in place, and it'll be announced today. So we'll keep an eye out for that, all right. Next, Rainer went on shortages of tests and how the tests were running out in areas with high infection rates and how people were showing up at the test centres to be dealt with don't have any tests left. Right? Bojo Waffle said that we were testing more people than anybody else in Europe and at a faster rate than anybody else in Europe. Raina wasn't having it. She bounced Bojo all over the chamber. It was back to normal. Bojo being a blustering, bubbling idiot and getting bounced right round the chamber. Now, last week we spoke about how Starmer took it off of um, Bojo uh, deliberately and I'd said he'd been nobbled. Right? Next thing he's half sick because of this internal market bill and him being a lawyer. So, Rainer bounced Bojo right round the chamber as if it was a armor that was thrown at the dispatch box. So, quite funny. Um, Bojo, back to his usual bumble himself. Absolutely not a scooby about what's going on around the building. Okay. Um, then Rainer went on the fact that care home workers are only getting their weekly tests and that the elderly were only getting the tests they were promised once a month in the care homes to make sure that the residents were um, COVID free as well. So, all in all, Rainer battered Bojo big style. Big style. Moving on, next up was Ian Blackford, SNP, and he went on the power grab. Bojo blasted, uh, but, sorry, Bojo boasted Scotland was getting a, a flush of new powers through the Imperial uh, Internal Market Bill, even though that's a lot of push. They're getting all the powers taken away from them. And in section 45 1 and in section 46 of that internal market bill. But anyway, um, Bojo said he was going to deliver a ream of new powers to Scotland, and Westminster's terribly generous to give Scotland the right to do anything. Because that's how it came across, folks, right? Bojo um, really battered Blackford. It was a poor show for Blackford. 
I was terribly, terribly disappointed in what I'd seen in Blackburn. And it's maybe time to remove the bugger from the tap seat and put somebody with a bit more fire in their belly in it. You know, they're supposed to be getting down there to settle up. No settle down. Blackford looked extremely comfortable yesterday. Looked as if it was where he was meant to be. Then it looked as if he was doing there to settle down. And Bojo bounced him all over the place. And when a clown like Bojo can bounce you around that chamber, it's time for you to move away and let somebody else take the seat. So Bojo battered Blackford, belittled the people of Scotland, and tell us we're lucky that they allow us to do anything. Colonial status, our imperial masters, are imposing themselves on us. And Blackford was about as much use as an ashtray and a bloody motorbike or a one-legged man and an ass-kicking competition. So Blackford better polish soaks up because when a clown like Bojo can bounce you out of place, you have to consider your position. Moving on. Later in the select committee, Angus B. McNeil challenged Bojo on a section 30 order. Bojo waffled and came out with a once in a generation push again. Angus pointed out that Bojo said he would die in the ditch if he had to extend Brexit. Bojo had a wee blush, but carried on me once in a generation push. The people are sovereign, no bloody politicians. I don't give a damn what bloody Salmon said or what uh, Nicholas Sturgeon said at the last referendum was once a generation. This is a bloody political platitude. We're going to hear that at the next Scottish election, a once in a generation um, election to get a new referendum. This is just political box. The people are sovereign. If the people want a referendum, the opinion polls show that we do, they were bloody well going to have one. And if that means replacing that mob along that road and all the road as well, and remember, I'm a hardcore SNP member, then that is what we'll do. So anyway, it becomes clear to Angus B. McNeil and everybody else watching the select committee yesterday, there will be no Section 30 order. So, Nicola, it's time for Plan B. This next election should be the plebiscite on independence. Right, also yesterday, Foreign Office Clown and Minister Dominic Raab is out in America, trying to placate the Americans out of the Internal Market Bill and the Good Friday Agreement. Raab tries to blame the EU for potentially breaking the Good Friday Agreement, even though the Northern Ireland Protocol suggested by the EU are there to ensure the integrity of the Good Friday Agreement. Might be a wee bit uncomfortable for the people of Northern Ireland having to fill a few forms out, but it's better than a hard border with their neighbours next door. Anyway, Rab's are there try to convince the Americans that it's no us and please give us a trade deal. Or sorry, it's no Westminster, and please give Westminster a trade deal. All right, didn't help much. Joe Biden comes out in the press, the guy that's likely to put Donald Trump's boo-hookie out of the office to say any infringement in the Good Friday Agreement, no trade deal with the Americans. Remember, folks, this is the Americans that are supposed to be plugging a black hole that's going to be left when we leave the EU. So, Rab's in America wasting taxpayers' money on a flight, on accommodation, on whatever it is he's doing, when he could have got dealt that by a conference call. Nancy Pelosi's already made it clear. New Joe Biden's made it clear. No trade deal mess with a Good Friday Agreement. Right. Right, yesterday the internal market bill continues its way through Westminster. Okay. Amendments being laid, amendments being voted down, the usual stuff, right? But the Conservative backbenchers are no comfortable with us. And Lord Keane stepping down 
yesterday is making them even more comfortable, uh, less comfortable with it. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyway, <coughs> Bojo throws the logs and his back benches a bone. Bojo tells the logs and his back benches, listen, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll give you a vote on the sections of this bill that breaks international law when the time comes and if we need to use it. So he's offered the Commons a vote on triggering the articles in the Internal Market Bill which would break international law. No much of a bone, considering he's got a massive majority in that house. And, you know, they will buy off some of the backbenchers. They will be offered money or whatever else. The ones who can't bribe that is through the whip's office. Um, the ones who can't blackmail through the whip's office because of their crimes. Um, they will be offered money to back us. So that bone that was thrown to the Lords to try and get, to appease the Lords, that there would be a, a vote in the Commons on triggering these uh, um, articles in this uh, bill, which breaks international law, it's no any good. But it might well be enough to get that uh, Red Tory and establishment bampot, Sir Keir Starmer, Sir Sick Note, and his Red Tories, the Labour Party, on board. Starmer hasn't got enough MPs. In fact, the opposition don't have enough MPs to beat this. And even if a dozen or so Tory MPs rebel out of this, Bojo's still going to get it through. So his compromise last night wasn't a compromise at all. It was just throwing the dug a bone. Simple as that. But it might be enough to get Starmer on side. And that is a worry. But as I say, Starmer's are totally bought up, owned, bought up, fully paid for and owned member of the establishment. I said last Wednesday it looked like he'd been nobbled at for, uh, Prime Minister's. And he, sure enough, goes on a sickie for the introduction of this bill. And it looks like he's staying on the sickie, even though he's had a, ne a negative test. Because you've got to stay in, in, in for a couple more days anyway. Right, yesterday, back here in Scotland, it's announced that the uh, Scottish GDP shrunk by 19.4% in the last quarter. Wow. A fifth of the economy doing the tubes in the last quarter. All right. That's uh, been attributed to lockdown and COVID and inactivity because of COVID, right? But with Brexit just being round the corner, maybe at the end of October, if there's no deal reached, or uh, at the end of December, um, that's nothing. Absolutely nothing, kids. That's just the start of it, right? But Scotland, believe it or not, actually did better than the rest of the UK. The UK, as a whole, its GDP, its GDP shrunk by 20.4%. Right, so marginally better. We're one percent better off up here in our economy than what the whole UK economy is. So, uh, but you think we've got a troll? I'll have a look later. Um, right now, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD. Um, that study shows that the UK, of developed com uh, countries, the UK has had the worst downturn. And this is because of Brexit and COVID, right? Earlier this year, the OECD have calculated that the UK economy will shrink by 10.1%. The average in the developed world is 4.5% due to COVID. So, out of the developed nations, the UK is performing the worst. In the world, and further afield, uh, the worst performing economy is South Africa. South Africa is still on the rigid lockdown, have been for months now, and its 
economy shrunk by 51%, even though they've had a bumper harvest. All other economic output seems to have stopped. At least they'll be able to feed themselves with a bumper harvest. Normally a lot of that would be sold. But I would imagine that there's going to be shortages elsewhere in the world because money's going to be tight for people in South Africa and the government in South Africa is going to have to take action to feed all these people that wants to keep them indoors. All right, but South Africa is the worst performing of them all. And they also appear last night. Labour voted against an amendment and, uh, sorry, voted vote against a move um, in the Scottish Parliament to join with the SNP and the others to try and pressurise um, SNP, Greens and Lib Dems to try and pressurise Westminster to extend the furlough scheme. Labour voted against it. They voted along with the Tories. So they're deliberately voting to make the Scottish people poorer. And see the adding their voice to the call. You know, we know that Starmer's calling for it. I reported on it yesterday. But Scottish Labour, now nah, they're not calling for it. You know, they want Scotland to be in trouble so that they can blame the SNP. Usual crap with Labour. Okay, so that rounds up the stories I wanted to cover for yesterday. I could have covered others. But to me, they were the most important ones yesterday that they, to talk about today. You know, but moving on to this morning, as we do, let's have a look at what the papers here in Scotland have to say this morning, all right? If there's a troll on board, that's all right, folks. No, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Just ignore the troll. If he wants to watch me, that's up to him. Right. The Telegraph, moving on to what the paper said this morning, all right. The Telegraph reads on Lord Keane quitting. Right? Because let's face it, Arts Tory, you know, uncomfortable with this bill, legal, legal. Scotland's a, a, the UK's legal officer in Scotland quits because of this bill. This, this is making people out there a wee bit unhappy. You know, and the, the Telegraph being the Tory graph, hits actually talking to the Tory heartland. So it's quite clear that the, the Telegraph are unhappy with this bill as well. Okay. The National goes on. Only independents can rid us of a parcel of rogues and their rogue state. Um, I, think it's, I think it's David Platt that wrote this article, but anyway, it's about getting rid of It's about hey, how... Uh, the UK has been patronising uh, uh, how the UK has chastised China and Iran for breaching international law and international treaties and the UK is about to do the same and the only way to get away from these bam pots is to get independence right the national law also goes on because it generally has a few headlines on the front of its page it goes on Scots law lord quips as Tory port illegal Brexit raid alright and that's talking about uh, the raid on Scotland's uh, devolved administration and stealing Scotland's uh, devolved powers. Okay. And the last of the headlines is Leslie Ridder saying it's not about him quitting, it's about what comes out of him quitting, Lord Keane that is. I haven't quite say, I've had no time to read the article, I'll have a wee look at it later. I quite like uh, Leslie's musings. Um, right, the Times goes on. Threat of curfew to stop the virus spreading. Okay. Now listen, this is concerning me. The numbers that were being dealt are infected, reflecting on what's in the hospital and the death rate. Um, curfew seems a wee bit OTT to me. What seems to be happening here is we get nearer and nearer the Brexit deadline or, or no deal uh, Brexit. Governments right across these islands are taking more and more control of the people. I'm beginning to get concerned that hey, this isn't just about COVID anymore. It's about Brexit and controlling people um, also. Because we know there's going to be food shortages and things like that. Um, see me a wee bit stushy going on in the comments here about, hey, about a troll on the page. Read a troll away. So, you know, 
Oh, by the way, I meant, I meant to mention speculations round right, about who's going to take care of the Lord King. It's been pointed out that Fluffy Mandel's a lawyer. Ha ha ha! Yeah, you're going to get Fluffy Mandel to sign off in this bill, isn't he? Lovely. All right, the Express goes on Sturgeon. We can't rule out curfew on pubs. If the license of trade's already suffering. Really, really badly. You're going to start shutting pubs at 10 o'clock at night again, probably. Hey, what does that happen if people drink faster? <laughs> That's a detrimental effect. I'm old enough to remember pubs shutting at 10 o'clock. Well, past night we used to go and order four or five pints and then race them. You know, absolutely mental idea. You know, seeing us pissing ourselves laughing at that. And rightly so, because we're all old enough to remember a pub shutting at 10 o'clock. You know, half past nine, you're standing at the bar, saying to the bar, what you made? Kicking out times at half ten, you're still serving at ten. You better give me four pints. <laughs> <coughs> Aye, Fiona. Fluffy is a Lord Advocate. Aye, it would be funny as hell. Right, where were we? Um, that was the Express. So, curfew and shutting pubs early might be on the cards, right? So, there'll be people wobbling down the street at half past nine, pushed out their face instead of half past eleven. Ah, well. Right, the Scotsman goes on, so sick note, Stammer says that independence and Brexit row is hot in Scotland. Well, one of them's hot in Scotland, but it's definitely not the independence row, the independence thing. Um, Self-determination is an inalienable human right. And when we look at the mess they buggers have made a run in the UK, no just Scotland. Remember, Westminster runs all our economies. England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland. They've made an absolute mess of running these islands. Look at the state we're in with Brexit and everything else. The worst COVID response on the planet. While Bojo's claiming it's world beaten. It is beating the world. It's beating the world on death rate and infection rate. Even their calculations doing that road are underplaying everything. Right, eh, the Herald goes on, care staff victims of prejudice over COVID death rate. Now the Herald's claiming that the care home workers, care home staff, are taking a pasting to the public about COVID and care homes. Now we know that's not true. This push is made up. I haven't seen anybody insulting the people that work in the care sector here in my village. And when I'm out and about and I see people in a, a care home uniforms, I don't see anybody giving them pelters. In fact, I see people giving them respect. The only people that are treating care home a, workers as if they're responsible for what's happened in care homes is the bloody UK government. Mind, oh, the wee badges, the wee care badges. Two quid a pop. Here's your medal for good service here. Cost you two quid to have it. Right. The eye goes on next year's exams and the bans. Now remember, a couple of days back, the Scottish Government said there'll be a full exam diet next year. Well, the eye says it's now in doubt. They say, it's a long time to the exams in April next year. We'll see what happens. Right. The record goes on. MP demands probe into Sturgeon's husband's... Um, Husband's the salmon messages, right? A leaked document shows that a mural backed police action against the former FM. Now, I don't know where that's gone. Well, I'm a liar, but I'm not bloody telling you. <laughs> there are certain things that I'm just not willing to say in this programme, folks. All right? Yeah. Um, and I've already said I'm staying out of the salmon uh, saga altogether. I'm only reporting on the committee because it's all you can watch it yourself. When the trial was on, I stayed away from it, and I'm staying away from some of the controversy that's about to come out of what happened with Alex Salmon. But anyway, uh, an MP who shall remain nameless, you can see it yourself in the record. Although I don't advise buying the rag, I wouldn't wipe my, my, my hooky with it. 
um, claims that the the first minister's husband backed um, Police Scotland's uh, action against the first minister, the former first minister Alex Salmon. Don't know the truth yet. Not there. Well, I'm no bloody well saying on here. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, and the star, well, the star's brilliant. I mean, hey, listen, I've got to do the star every day because of the comedy value of it, right? But anyway, apparently Dennis Nielsen, right, who was a blockbuster star, whatever the hell that means, and he became a murderer, he says, is Psychic Doug. Get us, is Psychic Doug. This is a headline. Psychic Doug knew I was a wrong one. Ah, oh, the star's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so, this murderer, apparently his Doug knew he was a wrong one. I think it's Doug with a bloody arm. <laughs> ah, the star's brilliant. It's worth it just putting it in there every day to get a wee giggle, folks. Uh, Sarah even called me a spoil sport. Aye, but Sarah knows I'm not going to bloody jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm staying out of the Alex Salmon saga. I could do my vlogs in prison. Get yourself in trip. I mean, I, I am being kept well informed by what's going on there eh, by a few people um, eh, who will also remain name nameless because when you get into this stuff, police start showing up at your door. All right, so I'm staying well out it. Hey, I'll leave that to some of my friends who are, who have been very kind enough to keep me up to date with the whole bloody saga. All uh, right, Dave. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at what you people are going to say. Never mind the troll. Well, we'll find the troll, will we? Hey, good morning, Spain. How are you? Oh, it's raining in Spain today. Sweat in the sky here, James. You should have come home for the day. Um, hey, uh, the video gets cut short from your phone. I'm very sorry to hear that, Patrick. Uh, beats the Sunday sport, Look, What's the Sunday sport? Obviously, it's not sold in my news agent, if it's a newspaper. And you can comment, but can you see the video? I don't know why I've got a cracking connection. Uh, you like the term for Pete Wisher, slap jack, slap a jack. <coughs> Sarah's even called me a spoiler spot, I know Daniel. Now, Dave, now. You be careful, Dave. Hey, you know where it's gone. Ain't know who you went to, Dave. Who it went to. Tell you, Dave, don't do that on this vlog, right? We can discuss this, uh, uh, you know. But come on. You've already had the cops at your door, you madman. They'll use the, the COVID figures to stop Andy. Um, you know what, Patrick? That could be true. But as I keep pointing out, the Irish won their independence during the Spanish flu, and it was much worse than this. Sorry, Aunt, you just need to watch it back. 30k a year to grass on your neighbour. Oh, is this these bloody uh, COVID wardens they're talking about down there? That's no COVID wardens they're setting up down there, pal. Hey, Jim, what they're setting up down there is he, what, the, what the Germans had, what were they called? The brown shirts. And he, this is another attempt to set up an arse, a bunch of black and tans. Well, that's a fair point, Thomas. You know, when Scotland becomes independent eh, and, and has a central bank and starts printing money, people under 25 grand a year shouldn't pay tax. Well, I don't know. Eh, you need to do the sums. But it might be, it might be doable. Um, eh, I've, seen that, eh, I've seen that article earlier eh, about British spies in the SNP. If there's no British spies in the SNP, they're not doing their bloody job right. Simple as that. Well, let's face it, 
There's British spies in the Extinction Rebellion and all the animal activist groups, and there'll be British spies in all the political parties, especially Labour and the SNP. Uh, Covid marshals to get paid more than nurses. Yeah. Uh, police in Northern Ireland been given the authority to enforce Covid restrictions. That's the same year he did. Was lost the broadcast at 24 minutes in Ireland. You can't get back on. I'm sorry. If anybody else has had problems with broadcasting, let me know later. All right. I haven't seen the troll folks. Um, but I'll, I won't get to see all the comments until later. Um, yeah. Right, I'm being warned, I've got five minutes, folks, all right? Hey, you can hear Buster the day, can you? We clicky claws on the floor, I have got a wooden flare. It's easy to clean up after children when you've got wooden flares. You know, carpets are much harder to clean. Brenda, can we take Westminster to court over the, the internal market bill? I dare say there's sections over that could be challenged, yes. The Sunday sports are boot paper, is it? Oh, ah, all right. I might buy that now. <laughs> <coughs> That's the nudie paper of the Sunday sport, is it, Stephen? Yeah, I'm, getting a, I'm getting an education here. And you're not getting that. Aye, right. I'll have a wee look at that later here, uh, Lorraine. Um, I didn't see uh, Alan uh, yesterday. Don't have to pay tax, uh, uh, David, if uh, Scotland prints the same money. Thomas, a uh, modern monetary theory, Hat seems to agree with you. Right? Black and Tans agreed, David, my goodness. Aye, you're right, Alistair. A London bus. Of course we could, Stephen, but it means going to court, suspending the uh, the action union. Yeah, yeah, I think there'll be a national lockdown before the 31st. Diana thinks it's a big possibility because civil unrest is definitely on the kids doing that road. As I said the other day, there we're much better at peaceful protest here. We're much better at organising ourselves. We're much better than uh, policing ourselves. You know, but doing that road, a bit like the French, any time there's a protest, things go on fire. The place goes up and smokes and there's riots, you know. Say bye bye. Uh, right, folks, I have to wrap this up now, right? Um, because I've got to take my wee dragon, sorry, my darling wife, to work, and we're picking one of our workmates up on the right. So, face masks on, ready to go. Now, usual stuff, doesn't it matter what you think this virus is real or no, hedge your bets, follow the health advice, facts, face coverings, avoid large uh, and enclosed uh, public areas, avoid large gatherings, can he anyway, <laughs> no supposed to be anywhere on six, uh, clean hands and cool surface uh, and uh, hard surfaces regularly, what that stuff's undermining my immune systems by the way, interesting that isn't it? Two metres of um, social distancing and book a test if you have symptoms. Okay, now you will look after yourself. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. I hope it was a, a enlightening and entertaining. The more is a round up of the week. So once I get rid of the dragon and I've taken Buster for a walk, I've got to work more. I'll start writing it today. Because it, it takes a wee while to write that one. Because I edit out some things and I add a few things in. So I'll see you all tomorrow for the review of the week. And I hope, Dave Way Allen, you better not get me into trouble with some of these bloody state comments you're making here, dear boy. And I'll be PMing you in a minute. Have a nice day. New the letters of uh, new letters of leak. Does it matter? Nobody protect you, doesn't it? David, that's half past. Ah, I suggest everybody writes to uh, Linda. Well, I'll let everybody read that comment, David, as I say, I'll stay out of this one and out to see how you see how long it takes them to bang you in jail again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, well, yeah, as a fool, you've got a cops at your door again. Right, so as I say, everybody, review the week tomorrow. Need to go. I've got uh, the wife staring daggers at me. Look after yourselves, all right? Good morning, Colin. Like, uh, love, to, love to your wife and lovely family. And have a nice day.
And Sarah says, have a nice day. You all have a nice day, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow for the review of the week, okay?